Hello and welcome to ET Insight, where we get you a 360 degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I am Sridhar Ramakrishnan and here's what we have for you on the show today. The government spends a whopping 1,60,000 crore rupees every year on subsidies. But most of that money is stolen even before it can reach the poor. That could soon change though with a proposed direct cash transfer system. Eliminate the middlemen and give cash directly to the poor. Direct cash subsidies may sound like a good idea on paper, but there are many hurdles on the ground that could trip it up. And Arush Sharma, Director General and Mission Director of the UID Project, joins us to discuss the government's latest effort to revamp India's subsidy payment system. Our top story first. Half a century of social welfare projects and programs has saddled India with an annual subsidy bill of 1,60,000 crore rupees. But by the government's own admission, the vast majority of that money never reaches the intended beneficiaries. Finally, there's reason to believe things will change for the better. The government is working on a subsidy scheme that aims to put money directly in the hands of consumers of LPG, kerosene and fertilizers. Nikhil Shivadas has more. Buying provisions is a monthly ritual for 50-year-old Golapi Mundol. Working as a maid, she earns less than a dollar a day. That leaves her totally dependent on subsidized rations to feed her family. However, when you tell her that the government is spending about 2% of its GDP annually to provide her with that service, she's far from impressed. The government is supposed to be spending so much on us, I don't know where the money is going. Golapi Mundol is not alone. According to the Planning Commission, 32% of India's population, or more than 320 million people, live below the poverty line. Currently, there are three large social sector schemes targeting the poor. The Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana, Indra Avaz Yojana, and the Massive Public Distribution System, or PDS, which accounts for 50% of the budgetary allocation for India's social sector spending. Apart from this, there are schemes like the National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, the Indira Gandhi National Old Age Pension Scheme, Midday Meals, the Rashtriya Swastya Bhima Yojana, the Aam Aadmi Bhima Yojana, and last but not the least are specific schemes like social insurance for unorganized workers and urban anti-poverty programs. We have tried many different systems uh, and uh, uh, many of them, most of them, uh, have not lived up to the expectation. So uh, the question really is not of finding the perfect system, but of finding a system which is, uh, uh, which is better. The quest for an efficient system is a necessary one because the government spends thousands of crores of rupees on social schemes and subsidies for food, fertilizers and fuel. In the process, it has also landed up creating a dual price system for essential goods and commodities which in turn has led to rampant corruption and leakages. As a result, a vast majority of benefits never reach the intended beneficiaries. Government estimates put total leakages in the subsidy system between 58 to 65 percent. That's perhaps why Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee's intent on implementing a direct cash subsidy system to cut out the middleman. To reach the target, targeted beneficiary, so that they can get advantage of it. In three areas, I am going to introduce the direct transfer. That's something UIDAI Chairman Nandan Nilekani has been tasked to do. He and his team have come out with an interim report on how best to implement the scheme. At the heart of the proposed reforms is the Co-Subsidy Management System, or CSMS. It will maintain information on entitlements and subsidies for all beneficiaries. Once the system is set up, the beneficiaries will be identified and their names entered into the system through their UID numbers. Finally, subsidies will be directly transferred to the customer's other linked bank accounts, allowing them to be accessed through various banking channels like bank branches, ATMs, as well as internet and mobile banking. Common subsidy management platforms which can be used for any kind of subsidies, both for goods as well as for cash. Essentially using a very technology-based solution to reach millions of Indians so that they can get their subsidies on time. We should shift to using this platform. It will lead to a huge increase in convenience. It will empower the people who are getting the subsidy. It will be more efficient. It will reduce leakage. To begin with, the plan is to introduce direct cash subsidies for LPG, kerosene and fertilizers. 
According to the Petroleum Ministry, oil marketing companies are currently losing 6 rupees per litre of diesel, nearly 24 rupees on a litre of subsidised kerosene and 247 rupees per cylinder of domestic LPG. At these rates, OMCs are losing 246 crore rupees a day. According to government estimates, if the average price of the Indian basket of crude oil remains at around $110 per barrel during 2011 and 12, the total under recoveries of OMCs are expected to cross over 121,000 crore rupees. To reduce this growing burden, the task force has recommended capping the number of subsidized cylinders available per household. This move is aimed at preventing multiple LPG connections in the same household and will prevent undue usage by the Indian middle class. The plan also calls for all cylinders to be sold at market price, with the beneficiaries receiving the subsidy amount directly into their other linked accounts. There is clearly a case to take some action now, and it's never too late to take some action because uh, our subsidy burden or un the recovery burden is very large. It's more than 100,000 crores. In such a situation, there is government has to to take some measures and I think it can take a measure without giving any signal for inflation. While domestic LPG is available to all Indians the same price, subsidized kerosene is only available to ration card holders. The subsidy on PDS kerosene varies from state to state and is limited to the quota specifically allocated to each state. But the government is now thinking of giving beneficiaries the option of a direct cash transfer instead. Those who opt for direct cash will have to buy kerosene at market rates. The task force expects to issue retailers with technology to identify the quantum of goods sold to beneficiaries. The subsidy amount would then be transferred into their accounts. Experts believe that this move will go a long way in helping companies and customers keep better track of prices and ease the subsidy burden on oil marketing. By sort of clamping down on this and uh, sort of stratifying the population even further through this particular scheme of identifying the real poor people and ensuring that only they get this particular benefit, I think there will definitely be a certain benefit which will also procure to the uh, oil marketing companies. You see, the government uh, has to take a call and I will also uh, talking to the government that this price is increasing. But uh, government has taken a very bold step uh, regarding increase of commodity prices at the same time reduction of duties that uh, really going to help the reduction of the total uh, subsidy burden of the uh, upstream companies. That means total under recovery will be uh, oil marketing company will go down. That means some benefit also should come to ONGC. Last but definitely not the least is the fertilizer subsidy. At nearly 54,000 crore rupees last year, it forms the largest portion of the total subsidy bill. The price of fertilizers for farmers has been constant since 2002 and the MRP has increased marginally after April 2010. That's primarily because India depends quite a bit on imports to meet its demand for fertilizers and fertilizer raw materials. For instance, India imports 90% of raw materials for phosphatic fertilizers and 100% for potassic fertilizers. There are 22 grades of phosphatic and potassic fertilizers and 15 grades of NPK complex fertilizers that are provided to farmers at 25 to 40 percent of production costs. Who then pays for the difference between the manufacturer's cost price and the sale price? You guessed it, the government. But it's a complicated and inefficient supply chain involving the importer, manufacturer, wholesaler, distributor and finally the farmer. The task force plans on straightening things out. The task force recommends having fertilizer retailers register themselves with co-banking agency networks and then have the subsidy amount credited directly into their account. In theory, the retailers would then pass on the benefits to the farmers. Since the fertilizer is being purchased at market prices from the manufacturer until the retailer, there will be greater clarity and transparency in procurement. But the move is not without its problems. This method is dependent on linking all 2.3 lakh fertilizer retailers to a co-banking network. And the technology to identify the quantum and volume of produce sold by retailers is not yet in place. The report talks about a separate CSMS system for fertilizers, but that is still only in the planning stages. Besides, fertilizer companies don't want a subsidy system that doesn't start at their doorstep. I think, you know, initially, it will impact companies' bottom line. 
and uh, certainly there will be resistance. The, the consumption will come down, which we also want the chemical fertilizer consumption should come down. So in overall company sale, turnover and profit will certainly decline. Much of the success of the direct cash transfer program depends on infrastructure and technology, both of which need to be built. Of the 320 million people estimated to be below the poverty line, more than 40% do not have access to either ration cards or bank accounts. So the government's ambitions of having the cash transfer system in place by March 2012 seems unrealistic. Indeed, but what are the challenges that the government is likely to face in rolling out this program? That's coming up after the short break. Stay tuned.